Welcome to a noob's guide to Skarsnik. This is Skarsnik, king of eight peaks, greenest gobbo under the mountain, and avatar of Mork or possibly Gork. As the most cunningly brutal greenskin in Warhammer, it's only right that Skarsnik be offered as a playable lord in the King and the Warlord DLC for Total War Warhammer, because nothing says awesome like a beady-eyed green Napoleon accompanied by Lassie the Hellhound, who prowls the underways so high on magic mushrooms they could solo climb Mount Everest. Yet most people only know him from yet another generic Warhammer lore book. Hey, Games Workshop, I have a pitch for you. A downtrodden solo act is abused for years until he pulls himself up by his bootstraps with endearing pluck and clever retorts. In the end, he becomes a champion of his people and everyone is forced to recognize that he was always a diamond in the rough. Five dollars if you can guess which Warhammer Disney princess I meant this time. But that's not fair to Skarsnik. He's exceptionally clever as far as goblins go, even if that's like being the smartest chimpanzee in the zoo. But a poop-flinging Sherlock Holmes still gives your average stunty a run for their money. Taking a page from Tiger King, Skarsnik redeems himself with a fashion sense that would make Liberace's eyes water. Looking like he's escaped from a German pleasure dungeon with a cap designed by Bad Dragon flopping around on his head and a couple of Irish ticklers glued on there for good measure. But what really ties the outfit together is the fashion bandana of Beard Scout Dwarf around his neck that leaves no doubt that Skarsnik spends every day neck deep in gushing dwarven underways. Skarsnik's life story can be tracked down to the minute thanks to an account given by the imperial playwright Baron von Bickenstadt, also called a lame narrative framing device created by writer Guy Haley, who begins Skarsnik's story by having him crawl out of the ground a hyper-intelligent mushroom and ignoring sensible forms of procreation. And I won't besmirch this video by weighing in on goblin reproductive practices here. Instead, I'm going to save that for an orcs video. But by the end of the novel, Skarsnik is a four-foot-tall mastermind who has worked his way up the Crooked Moon's goblin tribe through the untimely yet wholly inexplicable Explicable deaths of rivals, culminating in that time when war boss Ibrit Dungstrangler had an improbable yet terminal encounter with a jug of lamp oil, a nest of cave hornets, and Skarsnik's token pet squig Gobla, all in quick succession. This same Gobla appears in the game as Skarsnik's constant companion, but don't let demonic Pac-Man's charm and good looks fool you. He goes through men faster than Taylor Swift, and with the help of this walking mouth, Skarsnik succeeded in becoming Warlord of Carrick Eight Peaks, a dwarf stronghold held by goblins, dwarfs or skaven depending on which room you happen to wander into at the time. The quest to dominate this dank, dark paradise dominates the lives of three playable Warhammer lords in-game, each striving to claim the best holes for themselves, and instead finding themselves pounding away at each other in the worst three-way in history. Queek Headtaker of Clan Moors controls the deepest depths and constantly thrusts upwards into the dwarf hold like a power bottom. Skarsnik himself wants to spread the doors of Carrick Eight Peaks wide open and Superman in from the top, and caught in the middle of this Eiffel Tower of Death is Belagar Ironhammer, a pint-sized bear who is renowned for never quitting even when he's taking a pounding. And it turns out there's actually no word for pint-sized bear, so I humbly submit koala. But the reason these three lords are willing to play Guess Whose Pickle is in my mouth now is that Carrick Eight Peaks in-game offers a unique building chain for each of them. And for Skarsnik, it rebuilds the dwarf hold into a fortress tougher than Dolly Parton's bra straps and lets you finally recruit orcs. Did I mention that Greenskin Society is a caste system on steroids and that without this supreme achievement, Skarsnik doesn't have any orcs? orc units available to recruit, because even though they all may share that same distinctive verdant skin tone, green skins subdivide themselves into orcs, goblins, and snotlings, with orcs being larger than men, goblins a bit shorter, and snotlings not appearing in the game so they don't actually matter. By default, orcs don't respect any green skin that can be suffocated by their poo piles. And like any good frat, orcs treat goblins with the respect they deserve, using them as footballs, cushions, or a late night snack if the mood strikes them. Which makes the orcs' eventual subjugation by Skarsnik all the more impressive. But at the start of the game, the creative assembly is going to make you work for it. 
you don't start in your dwarven pleasure palace, and any green skin you come across is a walking invitation to a room with a single black couch. You play as Skarsnik before he became the sneakiest git in the world, which means you'll be depending on your stunted green brethren to propel the Crooked Moon tribe to glory, with an army composed entirely of all the crap you'd normally avoid playing in an orcs campaign. Goblins, or gobos as their orcish overlords like to playfully call them between beings, are just shaved Ewoks at the end of the day, whose cunning and determination is cute when pelting stormtroopers, but when turned against you makes them the sneakiest little shits in the galaxy. And in a race noted for being outstandingly devious and sneaky, Skarsnik lowers the bar and then limbos under it, which makes him the king of the Anglebiters. And I'm sure these things all have Care Bear names, but I really can't remember it right now because I needed that same brain space for more important things, like 9th century combat tactics, sizing undergarments, and an encyclopedic knowledge of James Bond trivia. Skarsnik takes the Soviet-Russian approach to warfare, showing his goblins how to defend themselves against anyone attacking with fresh fruit, and then throwing hordes of midgets at his enemies, knowing you can suffocate any foe if you pile enough bodies on top of them. His cheap gobbo's ability lets you recruit and upkeep goblins at half their normal cost, which honestly is still probably paying too much, as Skarsnik heads an army of night goblins goblins, sunlight-hating pariahs who live in caves any Redditor would recognize. These same goblins like to molly each other with madcap mushrooms and then do their best Tasmanian devil impersonation across a battlefield. And this idea of chowing down on suspicious forage to invoke a berserker comes from a Victorian idea about Vikings. I mean, it's complete butt kiss, but if nothing else, it proves the goblins have got serious balls. But without oversized orcs to depend on, you'll need to think like a gobbo and give give enemies the old sneaky stabby, since your army isn't meant for stand-up fights. You'll use your wolves, spiders, and squigs to bloody their heels and nibble armies to death like a pack of rabid chihuahuas, and Skarsnik gives a charge bonus to night goblin squig hoppers that turns them into a tiny furry cartel. But since even this might be construed as fighting fairly, Skarsnik has made sure anything in his army that slices, pokes, or stabs has been given a slathering of poison for good measure. Your general goal in any Greenskins campaign, though, is to get your fightiness up to 88 miles per hour, and then go back in time and make out with your own mother. Greenskins respect this sort of thing, and will flock to your banner with all the best goblin units available, forming an unstoppable wog. Also called the thing everyone wants CA to fix, because it's about as interesting as Brussels, and nobody wins when you're forced to work alongside an army AI inspired by Goldeneye's Natalia. Skarsnik doesn't care about any of this, though, as his victories are won before he ever even steps onto a battlefield. If he were real, he'd be able to quote Sun Tzu by rote like some sort of Wall Street D-bag. But instead of arbitrarily applying military maxims to screw your fellow man, Skarsnik's son F. Zoos into battles by cock-blocking any enemy reinforcements, as he starts the game with the lightning strike ability. And since he's sneakier than Sean Connery's toupee, he follows this up by tying wings to goblins, tying boards to giant spiders, and tying up his enemies in pincher attacks so that they're begging for the safe word by the time he's done with them. But these Da Vinci wannabe units are only unlocked through the Greenskin technology tree, also called that other thing everybody wants CA to fix, because innovation isn't the first word you think of when you think Greenskins. Some would say the tree is straightforward, others would say it's underdeveloped and lacking any personality or concept of orkiness. But people made this game, so we'll merely imply it here. But some greenskins do occasionally have a light bulb appear above their heads, and gobbos especially are like short green MacGyvers who can always find a way to bang two sticks together until they explode. Night Goblin's natural penchant for intoxicating beverages, impractical gadgets, and over-the-top vehicles would make even Roger more proud. And Skarsnik heavily relied on all of them in his time as a goblin spy, where he gallivanted across the Empire, gathering intelligence and wooing the ladies as only a three-foot-tall man can, undoubtedly washing out his distaste for humanity afterwards with gallons of cave mushroom martinis. Because of this time abroad, Skarsnik has
has accomplished a feat no other Greenskin has managed, and can speak both Reichspiel and Kazalid. Though this polygot mainly uses it to inform any dwarfs he meets about their mother, her sexual habits, and the usefulness of mountain ponies in a bedroom setting. And if that wicked jab isn't enough, Skarsnik can always depend on his personal prodder to get the job done. This unique quest item is a custom-made poking stick with an extended shaft and three vibrating heads that shoots magic missiles and happens to fit perfectly between a stunty's shoulders. Just don't expect them to scream when you get them from behind. It's <laughs> because the breath's driven out of your body. And Skarsnik's sneaky gits ability encourages other goblin heroes to follow in his footsteps, with agent actions costing half as much and giving twice as much experience. So spread corruption, kill their leaders, bugger their dogs, block their armies, and never ever use the big boss goblin you start with in a battle, because the big Jeffy is a double O agent only. Normally at this point, I also mention some super trippy end times lore, but that's a dead end with Skarsnik. See, one night he was visited by the great greenskin god Mork, who appears like Mufasa in the stars and tells him to go take Karak Eight Peaks, where the bestest of boys Gobla is unfortunately killed off because the author is clearly a cat person. After that, Skarsnik then disappears from the book because, and I shazbot you not, the author forgot about him. Chosen Vessel of Mork from Orc, and he got Nanu Nanu'd right out of the plot. But it doesn't matter, because Skarsnik has already earned his own full chapter in the Book of Grudges. And when he isn't bathing in stunty tears, he perfumes himself with Skaven Fear Musk, so that the warlord Queek Headtaker has a special place on his trophy rack reserved just for Skarsnik. So join Skarsnik on his stolen Iron Throne and concoct another wicked scheme of conquest by the flickering light of dwarf fat candles. Because the true master of Karak Eight Peaks loves it when a plan comes together. And if you believe you can judge a man's character by the quality of his enemies, then you're probably an asshole because that's a terrible way of going about life, but it's a good way of being a goblin. Thanks for watching. You can find some mod recommendations below and you'll notice there's a new join channel button. I'm not going to tell you what it does, but it may dispense candy.